Hi everybody! So I'm doing a Soul Rebirth journey today. This is for Allison. And Allison sent me a really cool message, which I'm going to be reading here. Um, just a little portion of it that towards the end that was just, I mean, it was so spot on. I totally related to it. Um, so I'm actually, I'm going to read this first and then we're going to get kind of collected and get started here. But Allison shared, this is just a portion. Um, so you say that you have this yearning, it says, I have this yearning in my heart that feels like a deep abyss, won't release its grip. And I know this is not just for this one person. Like, is this a yearning for God, a yearning for love deeper than what I can experience as a human? I say to myself, no, because love is all around me and everything and every experience I have. Yet the feeling of hollowness sneaks up on me again. It's somewhat torturous. Although I recognize and acknowledge that without that pressure and hollowness, I probably would not have opened up to God, spirit, my higher self in the first place. So then there is a sense of gratitude. I would like to be able to move myself forward from this, however, and thoroughly enjoy my life and where I am at. I feel close, closer and closer every day, I suppose. I am deep, deeply connected with God, and I feel this is my deep, this is deepening my relationship, but I'd like to experience God and life in a less heartaching way. Maybe I'm just a hopeless romantic at heart. Okay, that's enough. My goal is to unravel this great mystery inside myself, or at least catch a little peek from another perspective. You, you shared some other cool things, but that last ending part was just like totally nailed it for me. Um... So one of the neat things before I get started, Allison, um, for all of those watching, um, so I'm going to be doing energy work for Allison, and we're, I'm, I, Abby, I'm going to go into your spiritual atmosphere, Allison, and you, everybody watching, is going to get to participate in the experience. Um, we get to learn about spiritual healing, we'll get to learn about your awesome soul, um, we'll get to see what your energy balance looks like, um, and we get to feel that collective consciousness um, you know, that's what this is all about, is realizing we're not alone, we're not just individuals in our own world, but we're all connected, one way or another. So in all of you watching, and I myself know, I'm going to come across something really neat about you, Allison, that's totally going to relate to me, and you guys also are going to feel the same way. So I know it's an hour-long session, but I'm telling you, it's so worth it to watch um, and to explore um, the wisdom and the energy work um, it's really, really special. And Allison, thank you so much for all the cool things that you've shared with me. Um, and then for just being open-minded to share this on YouTube. So I'm just going to relax and we're going to get started, okay? In fact, I want to make sure my volume... I always get like weirded out. I don't want any random noises. There we go. Bam. I'm good. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get connected. I'm just relaxing here. You also shared that you've been doing energy work on yourself for the last two years, and I think that's a really powerful note to make. And that's really transformed your life. You're also a parent. There's also other experiences that were a bit of a struggle for you growing up. There's just, there is a beautiful essence of just wisdom. The frequency of what is wisdom. There's a divine feminine essence to this frequency. What does it look like? It actually looks like a, a brownish red colored room. And the ground is a dark brownish red, the walls, the ceiling, but it's not a box. It's actually kind of rounded out walls. The walls kind of come circular and then there's a flat floor and a flat ceiling. And then if you walk straight down this hallway here, there's like a door at the end and it's all a dark brown red color. I, the, the wisdom frequency is so delightful for me. I don't really care where I am going. And wherever I'm going, I'm accepting of where it takes me. I simply want to interconnect with the wisdom. And if I can have that everywhere I go, then I have everything in the universe. 
If I can have that, I have it all. The greatest treasure is wisdom. I'm putting wisdom in my pocket today. But there's some resistance going on here. Because in this room, you have wisdom with you. You are wisdom. But there's something you're supposed to... You have to face or you have to... It feels a little frictiony. There's some bigger reality that's a little difficult, a little jarring. And even with wisdom in your pocket, it still can intimidate. Interestingly enough, I, I'm just going to allow it to happen here. I'm in a part of your consciousness. The first part of it is loves wisdom and feels that wisdom is the ultimate connection with the love and the infinite universe and is so nurturing to the soul, to the journey, to everything. But in the process of this, which is so high vibrational, even as a human being in that state is so high vibrational, now we kind of, bam, there's human stuff going on. And I really want to be in the spirit world where I feel connected to everything and I feel like infinite potential. And then when I come back to human world, I feel like... <laughs> I'm clutching straws here of what, what I actually can do with, with all this wisdom. I'm like kind of, um, I feel like I'm in a smaller and smaller box, really. I feel like um, I can't just be this expression. I feel like I have to kind of um, muffle it or keep it in my pocket for myself. Um, Everything gets really internalized. Everything gets really internalized, sort of. There's a door right here. The, the goal is to, to keep moving forward, head held high, shoulders back, feeling em empowered. But the response is kind of curled up, resistance, feel like I gotta contain myself more and more. Then I don't have the freedom to just be myself or to just be the expression that I feel that I am. I have to contain it somehow. This is creates quite a wiggle worm of frustration because there's two scenes. One is the human acceptance of I'm going to curl up in a ball and I'm, I'm not going to move towards that door because to move towards that door, I have to keep my head up, shoulders back and I have to be myself. Um, then as it, in the curled up state, there's like this explosion that happens, um, of like cuss words, like, damn it, I'm not going to put up with this. You know, it is just like a blast and all this black, um, like fire and smoke kind of goes in every direction. And then it's like presenting the self, but that was all just kind of a fantasy. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of like hang out back here or so, um, that's it. That's just it. <laughs> so what, what version of a reality are we living in? Because there's still this third one and it's called like the wisdom strand of reality. Um, the empowerment, the connection with all. So what is preventing you from being that? Other humans is preventing you from being that which you are. So you're no, not even being yourself now because of other humans. But that's not acceptable. That's the frustrating part about it. That's frustrating. That, that pisses me off. That's part of your consciousness is saying. That just pisses me off. I feel so fucking mad. That's what your consciousness says. It's not necessarily, like, it could be even jolly about being pissed off because it knows that life just, you gotta roll with the punches, but still, the reality is you're sort of backed into the corner here. So we gotta just be, be legit about it. Okay, number one, I really am backed into a corner here. Number two, the reason I'm backed into a corner is because I'm keeping wisdom in my pocket, but I'm not putting wisdom on, you know? I'm not putting on that hat. I'm not wearing the wisdom hat today, as in I'm not sharing myself in this way. Um, because I'm sharing myself in a way that relates to everybody um, and doesn't freak them out or anything. A way that is kind of cushiony um, for all of us, so it's not weird. 
but their spirit realm is saying that um, you're never going to move forward in the way that you want to move forward because it's your life too. It's your life too and you matter. You are just as important as every part of your family and your friends and your relationships. You really are important and for them to uh, em encourage you to to get the wisdom out of your pocket and start sharing that, that is what balance and love is all about. But if they're like, whoa, who are you? You kind of freak me out a little bit. Well, that's just an adjustment period. And then the more that there's an adjustment period of you just kind of giving a little bit more, pushing a little bit more of the envelope, <laughs> then it's like there's an adjustment period and once the adjustment period is sort of balanced, it becomes more acceptable and more acceptable. And now you're not backed into a corner and you're making movement in the direction you want to go. And it's, at, it's so natural. You, you're, you're not going to get away with this. You're actually going, you're doing this already and it's going to continue. And, um, you will be, you're pushing the envelope without even trying. Like it's, it's actually going to happen whether you want it to or not. It's, it's part of what is going to happen for you. <laughs> you, you, it's impossible. It would actually be impossible. Um, I don't like to use that word very often, but it would be impossible for you to stay back to the, into the corner as an acceptable thing. Your soul is actually moving tiny little steps forward and um, it's going to get louder and louder and louder and you're not going to be able to resist. You're not going to be able to hold back. Um, it's going to just start pouring out of you like a like a, an opera singer. Um, it's just going to happen um, and it's not, not going to happen. <laughs> and so it's sort of like whether you like it or whether you don't like it doesn't matter because it's going to happen anyway. And whatever the reaction is doesn't really matter because they're going to have to deal with it however they deal with it and you need to deal with it. it like it's just going to happen. It's, it's inevitable. It's super inevitable. They, they, I'm, I'm like, wait, wait, sh Allison actually can just not do anything. Allison actually can just stay put and not change. They're like, uh, actually, no, Allison can't. She, uh, she actually can't and she's not. <laughs> she's totally not. Um, it's sort of like telling the ocean to stop moving. I mean, it's just not going to stop moving. Simply that the ocean is going to continue to move. <laughs> it's like telling the planet to stop spinning. Um, Allison is going to continue to move forward and that's just that. Well, you needed to hear that because that's really actually refreshing news for you. It's refreshing news and it's um, supportive news. You needed a little bit of support and reassurance that it's okay to be yourself. I know it sounds kind of like a silly thing. Why do I need somebody to encourage me to just be myself? But it is powerful when somebody just simply says, I love you for who you are and just keep being you. And it's amazing what happens. I mean, it's like, wow, I didn't realize I needed to hear that as badly as I did. And now that I'm hearing that, I feel like a little burst of, of like superhero energy inside me. And it just gives me that a little bit of an edge to be that much more of myself, you know? I super like this introduction. Um, I feel like I'm only just an inch inside your spiritual atmosphere. This is all at the surface. This is all the most noticeable, newest stuff we're working with here. Um, I'm not going deep down yet, so, um, but there's something so positive about the way this feels. Okay, good news here. There's a little bit of friction and friction is good. Spiritual healing loves like friction because we transform that into balance and harmony and it makes you feel more harmony and balance within and around yourself so it's like bring it on um, any type of crabby frictiony disappointments upsets um, terrifying echoes anxieties fears that's what we're looking for I gotta go in this doorway here. 
This one's a little tough. This is a tough one, okay? There's emotional, there's uh, emotional echoes going on in here. It's sort of like, you ever have that moment where you just don't know? And for some reason you cry and it's not your style, like you pretty solid, you know, you good, good positive attitude, but sometimes it just, you just cry for a moment and it feels like you need to. I'm sitting down at a small table, rests sort of next to a wall. It's just a very narrow, small, it's like two chairs worth of table. I feel alone in what is, it's like a kitchen in here. It looks kind of old school, like a pot hanging um, over a fire. Um, a little wooden table here. If it's quiet, it's dark. There's not a lot of light. There's a lot of shadow. Just because it's nighttime and the fire is going, there's only candlelight. It feels kind of like I'm alone right now. And now that everybody is gone and it's just me, I can finally breathe and have my own experience. I can share energy in a way that I feel kind of restricted to share when all the people are around. And I, when I just sort of, it's like, it's like you ever see, you know, men, like older men that have bellies, like, like the hot woman walks by on the beach and like, <gasps> you know, and then the woman goes past like, oh, <laughs> like this big belly comes out. It's like the family is not in the house. You know, when the family's home, it's like, keep a tight, you know, run a tight ship or whatever. But when the family's gone, it's like, oh, <sighs> I can just, I can let it all hang out. I can just be myself. And when it comes out, when the energy, like the energy bloom, like opens, um, it feels like, it feels like you, you've been carrying a lot more burden than you would admit to yourself. Um, it feels like there's a lot more sensitivities going on. You just, you ignore, ignore, ignore. Because, guess what, if we really got sucked into everything that made us feel sensitive in life, how are we actually going to live life? Um, there's a lot of stuff that feels sensitive every day about life, um, but you, you just kind of, you just take a deep breath, swallow it down, and just like, next thing, you know? Um, that kind of let that one bother me. But it's odd because, you know, those things add up, and in your, in this little place here, in your spiritual atmosphere, this is going on in here. It's all these little add-ups that you wouldn't have given credit to or are actually kind of still there and they're being felt. It's interesting because this room is starting to develop like a dark brownish red color to it. Oh, that's just energy movement, you know. Oh, there's exhausting um, aspect to it. You know, just tired. I'm trying to get as much sort of energy feeding in as I can before, you know, family isn't chaos, but sometimes you can feel like I got to get back to the other version of me, not the me that can just haul, oh, let it all hang out and just be myself, talk to myself, whatever I want to do in my own weird by myself world. But then when other people come in, it's like, I can't really be that. I gotta be somebody else, which is the, you know, the mother, the caretaker, the, you know, companion. And, um, that's, that's like the normal, that's, that's kind of on a normal level. Like there's nothing extremely out of the ordinary about this, but still it's jarring. It is noticed, it is felt, and it is a jarring thing. I feel, I, I feel the experience of having my own time. I'm going into uh, my own experience of letting go, um, self-healing, 
um, kind of a peace of mind moment, going through some thoughts, um, deep thoughts about the way my life feels, what it all means to me, um, the balance of everything. You're a really wise, like you're kind of a scholar at heart. There's something very, a really intelligent observer about you. Um, that it, I mean, it's not just what you observe as in, it feels like the mind is observing it. But with you, it's your heart. Your heart is observing a lot of things and you're totally a feelers type of person. You got a lot of, like a lot of like wise scholar type wisdom. Um, that type of frequency is in your spiritual atmosphere here. And there's also kind of an um, odd rush, like, oh my gosh, I only have 20 more minutes to myself. What, what I like just grasping at straws, straws, like, um, uh, what else, what else, what else before everybody comes in the door and then I don't have this time anymore. Again, it's just, just allowing the heart to open, allowing the heart to share the emotional responses. Another part of your dynamic, it's a little bit of aggravation through the shoulders and down the arms. A little bit, of, another part of your consciousness has a little like whippersnapper style about you. Um, just kind of, you're so, you're really dynamic thinker, um, you're a feelers type, but you have other like dynamic parts of your consciousness that are all working together as one, but you can actually, this isn't like a multiple personalities thing, this is more like just, um, you're really good at creating compartments of, of energy and energy experiences. Um, so while you have this separate feeler side that is having this moment to yourself that is self-healing, um, there's a little bit of an aggravated um, another person. Um, so I'm seeing one person sitting at the table doing all this stuff. Now here's another person. Okay, it's coming out of your dynamic, um, super extraordinary, wise, scholarly frequency. Um, so we have two people standing here right now. Um, well, one's sitting, and this one is like a scholarly man wearing a black jacket and like a buccaneer hat. <laughs> He's kind of a buccaneer style, but is all in black, except his pants are like a khaki color, white socks um, up to the knees, kind of thing, black shoes. He's a stern man. He is a stern man. <sighs> he is like a tightly buttoned man. Um, really tight around the collar. Um, how do you button it so tight there? How do you even breathe? He isn't, that, that doesn't even cross his mind. You button it and you enjoy the experience of being tightly fitted into your clothing. <laughs> it doesn't cross his mind that there's something a little too tight around the collar here. This is straight and narrow. This is the way the, the it's a tight ship. Like this is the way we run a tight ship. Um, a stern. Like do, doesn't a ship have a stern or something? Because there's some sort of play on words that he's a stern man um, and he's running a tight ship. Um, like I'm in the background like giggling because I swear to God there's like a lot of jokes going on here. But he's a stern man, so we have to take him seriously. I, I, <laughs> you ever have those moments where like kids do this? I like I did this as a kid too. When things get really serious, all you can do is laugh hysterically, even though it's like so serious. You're trying, but like really hard to be serious too. Because if you laugh, it's gonna be bad. Like don't laugh. But I can't hold it inside. It's just like all coming out in laughter, and it's like don't laugh in front of the stern man, man. You don't know what he's gonna do to you. The stern man is not gonna like it. He would be saying something like, "Do you think that's funny? You want to see something funny?" And it's not gonna be good. And as a little kid is like, "No, no, I don't want to see anything funny." <laughs> As you're laughing and trying not to laugh, and it's a terrible situation. I feel that way around him. He's just too tight. He's way too tight. He needs to loosen up. He needs to be taught a lesson about how to loosen up. Jeez. He's way too tight. I don't like him. He doesn't let me tell him that. I want to tell him how I really feel. I take my finger and I start by pointing it at his heart.
things, the energy is shifting and changing. I, you're still sitting at a very narrow table. The reason why it's narrow, it feels like the table goes into the wall and there's only room for two chairs, but it gets smaller and smaller almost to where you don't have a place to sit at a table and there's really no table to sit at at all. And now you're forced to stand up on your feet and face this man. I don't like anything about this. There's nothing you're going to do to break down that wall. It's kind of a situation, it's like no atomic bomb is going to break down that stern man wall. <laughs> and no matter what you say, no matter what you do, it's not going to change anything because he is so stern, he is so set in his ways, he is solid. You just want him to feel vulnerable for once. You want him to experience and express vulnerability. He won't do it. Would you like to know what's really on the inside of this man? You would recognize this man. Well, first thing that I see about him is he's covered in like a really dense, thick armor, heavy armor. This is like a father figure. He is really, he is so covered in, like he has manifested his own energetic armor that he is wearing all day, all night, and he never takes it off. He feels like the armor is his identity. When we wear armor, what is the purpose of it? Is it to be armor? Are we armored humans? Or is it because we don't want anybody to see our weaknesses? Somebody this armored up is full of weakness, but it wasn't for him to know that side of himself. It was for him to be very structured, very, which is too strong. The thing is, is his energy body is really, I'm not here to do energy work on him, but it's just covered in like a really dense, thick armor. And it's not healthy for his physical body, and it's not healthy for his mental body. It's not healthy for his digestion. We're not, we're not steel. We're not made out of steel. We're humans, we're organisms. Even a tree is sturdy, but a tree is also soft and kind and welcoming and even accepting. of its place in this world. You could fight back with this one all day long for the rest of your life and it's it's for his soul to decide when he's ready to to shift his manner. There are actually really positive aspects about what he's learning about the energy of being a stern person is they show me what is quite a, a caliber um, leader of a, of a big army because you can't show vulnerability you can't show weakness in the eyes or the stance or anything you can't to be a powerful leader of an army you have to be strong all the time he says, do you think that a, a human being is really meant to be strong all the time? He says, are you trying to be strong all the time? And how is it working out for you? He, so he softens as he says this. He still looks very strong and very stern. It's not for him to unbutton this top button. He will keep it buttoned that he wants you to know this. I see this man as having sailed ships, but also having marched um, with warriors across great lands, always with this stern energy that he works with. But it's not, that's all I'm gonna say about that. 
That's all there is to be said about it. I was exploring what was love about it, but it just got, you know, we just stopped that there. There is only this to be seen. Something about your heart is an acceptance because you're not born to be stern. You're not born to be that. You're born to be something else. Some of those frequencies are a part of your totality which your soul is quite appreciative of. To be strong, strong-willed even. But it's not for you because you're, you have also a deep feelings nature. You don't have to be like this man, you're not meant to be like this man. You're just meant to learn a few things from this man. About energy, about, about stern, immovable steel humans, very set in their ways. But that's not how you're supposed to, you're not supposed to develop into a duplicate. You're supposed to develop into yourself. <sighs> There's a lot more about you too that makes you very special. And would make this man very proud as well. He's still standing here. He is patient and peaceful right now. He's not being stern. He's just kind of like a statue, but he's a man. You feel humble. You feel meeker, like meek. And you're not demanding words in. don't really know who you are, do you? All you know about yourself is that your name is Allison and these details. <sighs> There's that little pesky energy side of you. It's like a little whippersnapper it gets like the evil eyes, it looks a little devious, um, and it just wants to make appearance and then it kind of evaporates again. Okay, now we're seeing something new here. So we all have like an emotional gut region, all right? So a lot of the hurts, a lot of the, it, you know, the punches, it's kind of the below the belt that was hit below the belt kind of thing. It's like that was low down and dirty and that just really hurt me emotionally. Um, that goes right in the stomach. That's a punch in the gut, you know? So when we feel like, ooh, I really like you. I have butterflies in my stomach. Um, oh my God, I'm freaking out. I'm going to have to give a presentation in front of a thousand people. Like, like your stomach feels a lot of stuff. Emotions go right in there. And looking at your emotional gut region, there's like a red burnt out circle. And then there's just black right in there. This is a very interesting image of you. Because this woman is... Well... Okay, so she is not wearing any clothing except for what is like like a little jacket like this. And so I can see her skin and the curvature of her body. Um, she, is, she is a beautiful form. She's very feminine form. And I see I, her breasts are exposed and I see this big red rounded burnt out and it's black on the inside. This is, there's something hippie-esque about this because she's kind of a free spirit, like she, she just, she's exposed, but she's not ashamed of it. There's flowers over her nipples, um, like actual, like hippie style flowers. There's something hippie style about this. 
it just makes me think of people dancing naked in the rain and with flowers or a garland around their head or something. Make love, not war type of thing. Just a moment here. Being very gentle with this opening. It's very unusual looking. It's starting to look more like a tattoo, just a black circle with a red outline right there, right below the rib cage. Um, Menace, I gotta let Menace just go, otherwise, Menace is gonna hide again. So this tyrant is going to come out now. It looks like a real jerk to me. It's kind of like a little, I don't know, he's got sharp teeth. He looks like Dobby from Harry Potter, but he's not a nice Dobby. He's a mean Dobby. He likes to hurt things. He wants to carve things out. It's like a... It's like a self-punishing side, but it's really beaten you to the emotional core. This one's really it's associated with emotions. Um, I gotta just I gotta let this thing play out because the only way that we're gonna be able to heal it is to just let it out of the cat out of the bag, you know. <sighs> no trying to hide this. Just let it out. It's okay. All right. So okay really quick images. Um, Dobby has a knife stabbing you right here. I see you also fallen onto what is like a random pole. <laughs> it's just in the ground and you just fell poof, right on top of it. It went right through right here. Um, it's just like constant like wanting to stab you in your emotional gut region. Um, wanting to rip, wanting to shred, hating, choking, punching. But all the while, we maintain this, like, beautiful balance. Because this is a beautiful, naked woman. So she has beautiful balance. But there's this, like, evil tyrant energy that is stabbing and ripping and creating, like, total calamity. And it's not very warm and fuzzy at all. And it really hurts deep in the emotional gut region. But nobody would ever know this. Because the truth is, there's like two things happening. One is totally about love and freedom of expression, self-expression. But then the other one is also just like, um, just like internal, like it's just like a tyrant energy. It's really hard on you. It's really constantly like sabotaging what you truly feel about life. So how can you truly step into that persona with another part of your identity sabotaging it? So what truly do you believe? Do you believe in freedom of expression as the ultimate beauty? Or do you, you relate to it's not time yet, so don't free, freely express yourself um, or I'm going to murder that part of you over and over again because it's not time yet. We can't do that yet. Well, the universe is saying that no matter what this tyrant, evil Dobby wants, um, your beautiful, you know, this beautiful uh, reflection of, you know, freedom of self-expression is actually the, where you're gravitating towards, like your soul is, is going to overpower the human um, fear or human resistance or human whatever. Your soul is actually going to take you there. Um, so much you we're just letting a lot energy is just sort of pouring out old stuff is just pouring out um, understanding self-love peace I'm telling like you're quite a you're quite an extraordinary person because you're a complex person you're really a beautiful observer you have a beautiful way you are a feelings person and you observe through your feelings even though you see stuff you explore what you see through way, the way that makes you feel. 
You're not somebody who's just constantly trying to think through and solve the puzzle in your mind, but you would see and solve the puzzle through exploring the way it makes you feel. And even being able to control the, the frequency movements of how you are sharing or um, not sharing your emotions. So you are always kind of on a sensory level feeling, um, you know, what is appropriate? Um, how do I hold my energy inside? Or how do I let it go? Um, how do I share this love um, differently with each person? And how, why do I do that? And what, you know, you would, you would explore every minute little tiniest little detail about how you experience life as a feelings person. It doesn't surprise me that Evil Dobby, because feelings people, um, I, I, I come across this often, and I have issues with this myself, is um, trying to always be, um, trying to always fit in or being appropriate in the societal balance. So even though I can feel things out, and I feel that the world is turning and it's time for more freedom of, of expression, I also feel like don't do too much. Um, it's don't, don't overdo it or, you know, you might freak people out or like, I can also be a little bit like, um, you know, I don't know, just don't just, just only share so much or always share appropriately or, um, and it has to do with the giving of the self and it's, it's just, it just becomes a complicated mess. With feelings, people, it can become a complicated mess, but it also can make so much sense at the same time. So why is that? How could it possibly be a complicated mess and make sense at the same time? It doesn't, it's like crazy. It's like a, I, I see, I can't, still can't even put my, my language. I can't even find the right language to define what this means to me. This is not the first time I've ever seen this. In fact, I've seen this many times. This little tyrant is actually relaxing um, considerably because we need to welcome this part of your energy reflection to know that it doesn't need to keep trying to, it's, it's there to maintain balance. Um, don't go too far too fast yet. Um, is that really balance or is that like pre, or is that just slowing things down? You know, it just, you gotta just let that thing go. But really, we don't let it go. We just transform it to let it know that um, this is actually the best way forward is to welcome that freedom of self-expression. But in the end, you have to decide how much freedom of self-expression are you ready to share right now? Maybe you don't want to just bear it all. <laughs> you know, there's a reason why this image is what it is. Um, maybe you're not ready to bear it all. Maybe it's just like only a little bit, not, not everything. Because I'm not, we don't live in a hippie world, and that's not really appropriate. And I can't really bear it all, so I can't really have freedom of self-expression. So I'm just gonna hold it all inside myself, and then I'm gonna let Evil Dobby just kind of roll control my life. Because Evil Dobby is what makes sure that I don't bear it all, and then ruin everything in my life and freak people out. You know, it's just like that's just like what's going on in here. The question is, who are you? Who are you? Are you? A compilation of what is best for everybody else. The stern, tight shit man. Um, you know, or the other people in your life. When is it going to be time for you to be like somebody who matters a little bit more than you, you've, you've allowed yourself to matter before? <laughs> I think, I think you feel like you matter to the people in your life. But I also feel like you, you're resisting self-expression. Really expressing yourself naturally. I don't think there's a person on this planet who could say that they just express themselves freely like we can all just say whatever we want we can't because uh, like we kind of define what certain people are ready to hear and what they're not ready to hear and we got to baby those people and then we can be a little bit freer with those people and so we're constantly feeling stuff out right and what if we didn't have to feel stuff out what if we just said heck with it knock down all the walls and just bear, bear it all <laughs> just be yourself 
Because being yourself, oh my God, that wisdom in your pocket is charming, is receptive, is um, felt, is uh, a lot of people relate to it more than you might believe is possible. And um, this is coming from a, ca a caliber frequency, a caliber force. And this force is also coming from you. And that makes you very, 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 very special. We're all very, 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 very special. That that's your unique speciality. Speciality. <laughs> that's what makes you the treasure. So what are you going to do about that? Are you going to hide the treasure that is you um, underground and then, you know, X marks the spot, but we're not actually going to mark the spot because we don't want anybody to know where the treasure that is me is really hidden. And we don't want anybody to have access to that. And I'm just going to only have be that part of me when nobody is around. I'm just going to be actually who I am only when I'm like myself in private because I'm not going to be that around people who actually know me because that's that's not... Like, there's something about you discovering this, you seeing this about yourself, that you, that who are you? Because you need to be consistently yourself with every single person in your life. Otherwise, you're constantly, like, measuring the volume of um, what is natural love to share or not share based on their energy signatures. Do you see what I'm saying about you? You're a feeler, you're a feelings type of person, and you're doing this probably, maybe you realize you're doing this, maybe you don't, I don't know, I think you do. Um, but you need to be reminded of you're doing it um, on a level that you're encouraged to explore being a consistent version of yourself, or or if, you know, if that just doesn't relate, or it's just not really an option, um, you need to um, push the envelope a little bit more with with exposing a little bit more of yourself like like what women just says hello <laughs> you know like there's certain women that'll do that but you know most women don't just do that <laughs> you know we're kind of like not ready yet <laughs> and so there's something about this here like um, you need to you need to bear a little bit more, expose a little bit of yourself in a way that maybe you're not ready to yet, but you spirit is saying you're free spirit and you need to be freer than this. You need to feel freer than this and it's good for everybody involved. But it actually feels positive to me. It actually feels like you might be surprised by how accepted you might you you might feel more accepted than you might believe would be possible. Um, it feels like a little bit more positive than you would believe it would be. Um, I think you are the hardest part in your life. You you still have this stern shipman going on here um, that is telling you to keep the tight the button tight on the top. But um, the reality is you you're not the tight shit man, you're not the stern man or whatever, <laughs> the tight shit man. <laughs> I'll let you do whatever you want with that statement. But um, there's something about like buttoning, unbuttoning and um, you know, it's just there's something about knowing that it's okay to express yourself and expose who you truly are on the inside. Don't let that stern and man, that is also a part of your frequency, which actually gives you the strength and ability to be really strong-willed, um, which is actually a, a bit of a talent, but it also can be a bit of a hindrance too, um, because a strong-willed person could be strong-willed to stay in line um, and be appropriate for everybody, when really they should be strong-willed at, at just... At, you know, being themselves. I'm going, I am putting my foot down. I am going to be myself and I, I'm not going to budge for anybody. Where's your strong will at when it comes to that stuff? Are you strong willed at being, being insistent that you are not going to, you're going to be yourself, you know, there's something about strong willed and where, how it's being like divvied out. It's kind of a cool thing happening here because we're starting to discover this stern man is also a part of your identity um, and you are standing up and you are going to him and you are unbuttoning the top button he turn he he instantly looks kind of like a like a freaky like a 
It's just a lot of energy shifting going on here. Like Gollum. He reminds me of Gollum, you know, but but that face. But that face on a t like a taller form, but it's also like a ghost essence and it's black and it just goes <sighs> like that um, as you kind of unbutton the top button. It's also the part of you, the strong-willed part of you that is resisting. It's the evil Dobby within you saying, don't do it. I'm going to stab you a million times if you unbutton that top button. Don't do it. But you're doing it. And you're saying heck with it. I'm unbuttoning it. So you're unbuttoning the next button. And you discover this man is just a mannequin. Just wearing a, a gentlemanly outfit from days of old. Unbuttoning it all the way. Okay, this is actually a beautiful transition that I didn't expect. There's something more sensual about this. There's some something very loving about companionship and intimacy and two bodies connecting. Because it's not, even though it looks like a mannequin, but there's so much love in this gesture. And it's starting to sweep me away into what is like quite a beautiful like energy space um, of intimacy. Intimacy, energy, and um, companionship, and um, lovers. It has nothing to do with stern, stern people. It has everything to do with intimacy. And, um, ex and knowing that it is safe to be yourself with the one that you love. And that true love is sharing who you are. And the only way that two trees can truly grow together is when they um, share those vulnerable sides and then the other listens, the other um, is supportive. Maybe there's a little bit of a weird reaction, but it, it's, it's just the initial shock effect. But it starts to transition out and it starts to embrace you that much more. And it starts to feel more close and more connected and more solid and more generous and more loving, more supportive. It's really freeing of the senses. It's very safe. It's knowing that you are safe to be yourself. It's really relieving on the heart. It's letting the belly hang out. <laughs> it's just letting the, it's just like letting the energy hang out when you are yourself in your own world. But this time the people are in, that are in your life are seeing your exposed belly. You're not the like, the, you know, like, like, oh, I thought you had like a washboard stomach all along and you had this big belly, you were just hiding it from me. But now I know, and I would much rather see you breathing, relaxing with a belly than trying to hold it all in and look all like proper or something. That's not very fun. So some part of your life can feel more like, Gotta hold it in, gotta hold it inside. Not time yet, not time to let it out yet. Oh my God, oh my God, I can't wait, I can't wait. I'm gonna have to hold it in. <sighs> yes, I got time to myself again. <sighs> I can be free to be me. <sighs> There's something in Spirit Realm is saying that you gotta let it all hang out. You gotta let it all hang out. <laughs> you gotta be natural. You gotta be natural. And natural is beautiful. Natural is celebrated. Natural is your divine feminine essence. There's beautiful echoes of intimacy when you choose to be natural and choose to share more of your true, true self or true nature. May you're not resisting um, self-expression comforting it was it's surprising it's just I, there's 
there's just a beautiful the frequency i just feel the frequency or the energy of balanced love balanced love that is also intimate and balanced and very supportive and helpful and understanding and deep just allowing the energy to continue to circulate it just feels like we're returning to something a little bit more just really relaxed really relaxed smiling it's rekindling a flame or a fire rekindling love um, it's holding hands it's snuggling under a blanket it's feeling that family connection and love. It's smiling from the heart. It's feeling like everything's gonna be okay. And as much as this is just kind of a normal evening, there's something a little more charming about it because I feel connected and like I'm breathing, like I'm just being me, and being me is beautiful. Wow. It's lovely. Just kind of relaxing right now. I'm actually, I'm gonna just take a step back from your spiritual atmosphere, okay? And I'm gonna go back in and we're gonna see what it's like, all right? So I'm just gonna take a drink of water. All right. As the spirit realm, if there's anything else that we could share with Allison today. They're talking about, it has to do with two sides of the story. One side is what it is like to be human. The other side is what the human longs for as a spirit essence. So you live in a human world that could feel like it's a little bit heavier or denser and it's not as free as infinitely free or as creative as you would like it to be um, and your heart is so full of creativity and feelings and connections with so many places um, so it's encouraged for you to really admit it that you are definitely a, a healer at heart People who are feelings people are amazing healers because you can feel when somebody is not um, in their caliber and you can actually, if they're open to it, um, you can actually go into that frequency. So like for instance, your, your hubby, um, you can say, you know, I feel like you might be stressed out from work today. I'd really like you to just relax and maybe if you would be okay, I would like to do some um, give a gift of love from my heart and my soul to make you feel better um, would that weird you out because um, I don't want you to feel weird but I really want to do this for you and then he's like all right <laughs> and then you're like yay and then you just hold his hand and lay down or you or maybe he's on the couch or you go touch his shoulders or when I go into energy vibrations it's gonna take uh, some time so I don't rush it so I usually just want to lay down or I want to sit down and then I go into what the feeling what it feels like and I know this feeling is connected with this person that I love 
or this person that I don't know or this, you know, and then I just follow it and I see what is there and I fill it with hugs I love or I speak to it, it just, it depends on what it is sharing with me. And you could easily do this with anybody, anybody near or far. You could easily transform their life with the a, amazing feelings body that you have. You could be very articulate, um, you could be very observant, um, you'd be very good to, even to do what I do. You'd be very good at it. This is an example of you opening up to someone that you love and welcoming them into your world and exposing yourself a little bit more um, in a way that you're not used to. Um, but it, I feel really positive that this is, this might not be as hard as you think it's gonna be. Um, it feels a lot more welcoming and even um, encouragement. It might seem a little out of fish out of water for you know a little bit, but it feels like it's gonna become encouraging. I don't know what it is, but I just whenever I see it, I just see two people becoming really close and then the intimacy and the love and the balance and and I don't it never goes into evil Dobby. <laughs> Evil Dobby is your thing. Evil Dobby has nothing to do with this. It feels a little exposing. It feels a little weird. But this is actually going to bring... bring that There's going to be so much more closeness. When you start to just kind of share a little bit of who you are. The twinkle of who you are. And it feels a lot more welcoming than you might expect. Hmm. It's interesting, there's one more echo that comes to me. The stern man. It's like, this is this is also an individual of, its, of his own kind, but this individual has made an impression on you, which is why you also possess a little bit of that stern man within yourself, as sort of really strong willpower. Um, but you go way back. You actually have had lives like, I mean, your soul recognizes what this stern man has done in other lifetimes. There's an odd mutual balance between you both. Might be hard to believe that, but there is. And while this stern man can manifest that strong will within you, but you don't realize how your free spirit, which your natural free spirit, style um, has actually made an impression too on him. It, the spirit realm says children make impressions on their parents. Impression and parents make impressions on their children. That's the point. <laughs> And we welcome what the learning is because it's exactly the medicine we need to be the people we are meant to be in order to accomplish the goals we are meant to accomplish. So is life predestined? I still do not choose to believe that life is a predestined experience. I choose to believe that um, we can either succumb to to negativity or overcome the negativity and choose to embrace the ride. Um, and how you either embrace it or resist it is then your purpose, is then your learning. And we always follow our heart. But sometimes the soul is just so driven um, to certain accomplishments um, that it just, it will go there whether you are resisting or not. Um, you will just gravitate, magnetically gravitate towards the experience. So, but in the end, it's best to to take that you know to raise the sails and go for it no matter what the the fights or no matter what the you know i i'm gonna be a sturdy stance with what i believe or i'm not gonna bend to that or i'm gonna hold it all inside or you know it just you know raise the sail and go for it 
and just really focus on being driven to be who you are. This stern man was very driven to be exactly what he believes. And it's time for you to be very driven in exactly who you, what you believe. Raise that sail and just go for it. That's, that's the message. <laughs> All right, Allison, that was pretty cool. And it was really fun. And I have a feeling it's going to inspire you to... To, to it's been gonna inspire your feelings body to feel this one out and maybe even gravitate towards doing things a little bit differently which is gonna make some big differences um, which are improvements in your life and it might feel a little frictiony or weird at first but it's gonna be all for the best and I think you really appreciate what how that how the tables will turn so all right, thank you so much. And for those of you watching, if you're interested in exploring a session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Also, if you're interested in um, checking out more of my just regular channeled messages or spiritual healing, I have another YouTube channel. If you just search Abby Normal, you'll find me. Um, I'm also on Patreon, Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. So. Um, you can find links to those to the YouTube channel and Patreon at my website as well. So um, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Allison. I wish you all a wonderful day.